thing is yeah. valid uh, jitan sir it is valid introduce the session uh, good afternoon all i we mohsin darian doctors near to very welcome you all on behalf of department of mechanical and automobile engineering parul institute of technology parul university today we have with us dr medhat currently works as a associate professor at the department of mechanical power engineering faculty of engineering tanta university tanta egypt he will conduct a webinar on homogeneous charge compression ignition hcci engines challenges and new research trends he had completed his doctor philosophy in engineering from school of energy and power engineering china he has uh, worked with many research fields like conventional internal combustion engines algae biofuel productions hybrid vehicles etc dear dr medhat sir we welcome you and very much thankful for accepting our invitation now i request you to start the session okay uh first of all i thank uh, uh oral university uh, of technology and thank uh, uh this invitation uh today we'll talk about the homogeneous charge compression ignition engine challenging and new research uh, trend uh and this presentation will talk about about seven seven uh, category the first we'll talk about uh, uh, overview for the engine technology overall engine technology we have a uh, emission standard used this day is and uh, actually he forced us for a new development for uh, this kind of engine we'll talk about the summary for alternative fuel used today and the uh, conventional uh, diesel and gasoline engine uh, new trend as a new trend and we'll focus about uh, homogeneous charge conversion uh, ignition engine uh, advantage and major challenging and proposed solution for all of this uh, uh, challenging we'll talk about uh, the parameters maybe influence uh, the hcc engine combustion and uh, focus uh, in uh, the most important uh factors may be uh, influence or affecting its engine performance also we'll talk about uh, the future trend for uh, uh hcc engine uh, combustion before we're talking about uh, uh, the hcc engine we have a uh, three challenging we must solve it this uh, uh, this phase or all the research work in, in our field focus in three main uh, objectives the first one higher efficiency or maximize the engine efficiency and minimize uh, emission also uh, we use a wide a wide range of uh, fuel and uh, new fuels to solve this three point uh, for a conventional engine uh, actually we uh, uh, use a gasoline direct injection valve Uh, variable valve timing turbo charger all of this kind of uh, enhancement may be very uh, complicated and uh, take a long time to do it for the conventional uh, fuel we use a diesel and gasoline and there may be added another alternative fuel uh, uh, to enhance or improve the fuel uh, properties also to have a, a maximum efficiency and uh, minimize uh, the engine emissions uh, we use alternative engine like uh, low temperature combustion technology actually uh, uh, this force us for using uh, hcc engine and bcc engine and also uh, activity controlled combustion uh, engine uh, emission uh, uh, regulation for the euro for example uh, make us uh, uh, must follow the uh, the optimal must follow the optimal uh, operation or the optimal research for example from 1990 the particulate and the hydrocarbon emission and nox when we compare it with uh, 
Euro 5 for 2008, there is a huge reduction who must have made it in uh, emissions. For example, particulate who must reduce it for 95 percentage, reduce it for about uh, 15 years. Uh, also, NOx emission who must reduce it for about 86 uh, percentage. This is a huge, so we must use uh, new techniques and advantage techniques to reduce the emission in this value. Uh, actually, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, voted for uh, uh, that kind of engine. For example, uh, the engine that used uh, more power, like uh, for 750 horsepower. So the reduction in uh, the amount of NOx is very huge. So must follow uh, the new advanced techniques for the combustion. When we compare between the two parameters for uh, the emissions like uh, NOx and particulate, and compare an, uh, a different emission standard for Japanese and uh, Euro, we find a, a huge reduction from Euro 3 to Euro 6. So as you can see here in this uh, uh, this point, the particulate is reduced more than 10 milligram per kilogram per hour, and the NOx reduced from uh, 5,000 5, uh, milligram per kilogram per kilowatt hour for NOx to less than uh, 500. So the reduction is very huge. So we must uh, follow the regulation for uh, the new standard. Actually, this makes us to make the history for the development for the diesel engine and development for the spark ignition engine. The diesel engine started from 1960 to uh, 2009 or 2000 more. For Euro 5 and for uh, Euro 0, we find a huge development from uh, classical Diesel engine for swirl chamber. We focus. We just focus for swirl chamber based on the design and uh, uh, flywheel. We increasing the injection pressure from uh, uh, 900 bars for the most for the end of 1990, and now in this uh, uh, time we use the injection pressure more than 2,000 uh, bar. For also, for uh, the spark ignition engine, we uh, uh, moved from uh, mechanical uh, controlling to uh, more advanced microprocessor controlling spark uh, ignition embedded with uh, fuel system technology techniques and use a direct injection techniques. All of this will make it to reduce the NOx emission and fit all the euro uh, from uh, euro zero in uh, 1992 until now. Also for using alternative fuel, uh, we divided in two kinds of fuel. Gasoline like a fuel, combusted or uh, burned with a spark ignition. And another kind of fuel, a diesel like, diesel -like fuel, uh, uh, burned with the compression ignition, like uh, uh, what happened in uh, diesel engine. Uh, so we have a, a fossil-based fuel like hydrogen and natural gas, and uh, this for gasoline. And also we can use it in uh, for diesel engine, uh, biodiesel, dimethyl ether. This is a new fuel. We can use it uh, in these days. This kind of fuel have a, a, a lot of advantage over uh, uh, conventional or uh, common kind of fuel. In this schematic presentation, we have a three major combustion techniques, uh, spark ignition techniques and compression ignition techniques for diesel uh, combustion, diesel direct ignition diesel engine, and we have a homogeneous charge compression ignition as a new uh, technique. We have a five 
intermediate techniques we can use it between spark ignition and combustion ignition and homogeneous charge combustion uh, techniques. For spark ignition techniques, we can use a dual fuel, like uh, gasoline plus natural gas. We can enhance combustion uh, inside the uh, spark ignition engine by adding hydrogen, for example, for the gasoline to enhance combustion and enhance the emission. Also, for compression ignition engine, we can use a uh, dual kind of fuel. Uh, for example, diesel fuel plus dimethyl acid, or uh, for uh, another kind of fuel, we can use a compressed natural gas, for example, or other kind of fuel. This, so, we can use a dual techniques for compression ignition and spark ignition engine. Also, for if we want to improve the combustion for spark ignition engine, we use uh, spark assistance compression ignition engine, spark, uh, spark assistance compression ignition. This we can make some advantage uh, uh, from uh, the combustion of spark ignition engine by applying uh, some uh, uh, improvement in fuel in fuel system techniques and the spark sparking techniques. The other three kinds of fuel, if we can uh, use a diesel, but we use some fuel remixed in uh, intake manifold, inject some fuel from intake manifold, or intake, uh, inject some fuel from uh, uh, during suction stroke, or uh, the starting from the compression stroke. So this kind of injection named uh, remixed or partially remixed our uh, compression ignition engine. But actually in these techniques, we inject the fuel in two times, one time inject early, and another like a pilot, inject it before uh, the two bit center during the com uh, compression stroke to uh, make a phasing or uh, burning the fuel. Also, we can use a gasoline with uh, diesel, inject gasoline in intake manifold, Gasoline is uh, easy to mix with the fuel, easy to vaporize to, uh, as a fuel. During the suction stroke and compression stroke, we use a little amount, maybe 20% from the total fuel, 10% from the total fuel. We can inject it in, into intake manifold. And the uh, other amount of fuel, direct, uh, uh, use it as a direct injection with the conventional techniques, uh, diesel fuel. Uh, we we'll talk about we use another fuel, gasoline plus diesel. So we have a two kind of fuel. In this technique, so if we combine it with another kind of fuel, we have a higher reactivity. So we we'll talk about reactivity compression, uh, compression uh, charge compression ignition engine. This means we have a multiple fuel. We use a multiple fuel to control the reactivity of the combustion. As mentioned in this uh, uh, representation, we have a gasoline. The gasoline may be reactivity is uh, becoming low. Reactivity uh, for the gasoline uh, fuel is uh, uh, low, and diesel fuel reactivity is high. All of this, if we mix it together with a certain amount, so we have an activity controlled combustion engine. If we use pure gasoline engine, lower activity fuel, so we can use uh, uh, port fuel injection techniques, inject the fuel into the manifold directly, or I use the more advanced technique for a, ga a gasoline direct injection. With the gasoline direct injection may be uh, enhance the combustion process and lead us for the lean gasoline direct injection or lean GDI or uh, we uh, we named it in some case stratified combustion techniques. The stratified combustion techniques leads us for low temperature combustion. Low temperature combustion, this a uh, new techniques uh, for HCC engine also or BCC or any kind of engine. All of this engine use low temperature combustion techniques. Actually. 
we need to merge the trend for the conventional diesel and the gasoline engine for the low temperature uh, combustion uh, engine. We have two uh, parameters looking, we're looking for it for better efficiency and the cleaner emission. When we compare the spark ignition engine, spark ignition engine, the efficiency is uh, lower than compression ignition engine because uh, spark ignition engine compression ratio, for example, it's uh, limited with 10 uh, or less than 10 in some uh, kind of uh, engine. When we compare it with a conventional uh, compression ignition engine, maybe we can uh, increase the compression ratio about 10. So the efficiency for the compression ignition engine is higher than spark ignition engine. But uh, if we have an efficiency, so we have a, a less or uh, the emission may be uh, uh, it's little high to make uh, some troubles. If we want to uh, increase the efficiency for the spark ignition engine, so we should look for increasing the compression ratio. If we want to increase the compression ratio, so we must use a direct injection technique, something like direct injection technique, using a higher EG, uh, EGR percentage inside the engine or a complex uh, fuel systems technique. All of these methods, if we apply it, so we go through or go in uh, low combustion uh, technology, low temperature combustion uh, technology or low temperature engine technology. Also for the conventional uh, compression ignition engine, if we use uh, extra high pressure for direct injection, use higher uh, exhaust gas recirculation and the complex injection uh, strategy, so we we'll go through uh, low temperature uh, uh, combustion technology. Here we can compare between the three kind, the three uh, types of engine, spark ignition engine and compression, uh, homogeneous charge compression ignition engine is the middle. Uh, compression ignition engine. For a spark ignition engine, all the mixture prepared before the spark plug, the fuel and the air mix will before the spark plug uh, timing. If the spark plug uh, combust the flame, we have a flame and this flame moving inside the cylinder and they uh, take sometimes uh, to burn all uh, the mixer inside uh, the cylinder. In compression ignition engine, we have only air and uh, inject the fuel in a diffusion mode. So inside the core of the flame, we have a, 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 a fuel with a higher concentration. This fuel will reduce the particulate because the temperature is low, um, uh, no oxygen inside the flame. In the periphery region in the uh, inject, in injector spray, we, we can find um, oxygen with a higher concentration and uh, 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 fuel with a vapor, combusted wheel, higher temperature, this will produce NOx with higher concentration inside the engine. So for the combustion ignition engine, we're looking for a multiple hole injector to uh, reduce this problem inside the engine. This will uh, uh, need the extra high pressure inside uh, the engine, maybe need uh, some uh, modification for the fuel system and also for the engine design. But when we compare the two modes, spark ignition engine and compression ignition engine with homogeneous charge compression ignition engine, this is what happened inside uh, the engine. The mixture with, uh, of fuel and the air mixed well during the suction stroke and the compression stroke. And uh, the auto ignition occurring inside the engine, all the mixture will uh, burn it in uh, one time, in no time, looks like explosion. Um, a huge number of spots of combustion, a huge number of flame. This flame 
make the combustion as a whole in all the cylinder in a flameless mood. There is no flame inside the engine. All the combustion happening in no time, almost no time. So we uh, said in these techniques, uh, the combustion or the heat addition process happening in a constant volume degree, in a constant volume. This actually, this is the theory of a spark ignition engine. The heat addition process happening in no time, happening in a constant volume degree. So, if this happening here in these techniques, so we can reach to uh, the engine efficiency for the auto cycle. So the, the main reason for increasing, increasing this engine efficiency. So the engine efficiency becoming very high in this kind of engine. Uh, we make a different combination uh, combustion for a strategy for internal combustion engine. We have a two era high temperature combustion and low temperature combustion. We have a low temperature combustion if we uh, need to uh, enhance or improve the conventional combustion techniques. So use a homogeneous charge combustion ignition engine or stratified charge combustion uh, combustion engine with uh, different kind of thing. In this figure, actually, this compare between three techniques of uh, combustion technique. Homogeneous charge combustion, uh, combustion ignition techniques, we have a four stroke here. The first stroke from a uh, suction stroke. The second stroke for, uh, from bottom dead center to top dead center during uh, combust uh, combustion stroke. And uh, the third stroke for a uh, power stroke or combustion stroke. The final is uh, uh, for uh, the in the stroke for uh, exhaust stroke. We have homogeneous charge and the combustion ignition engine and spark ignition engine. We compare with uh, two main values, two parameters. The first parameter there is uh, uh, no throttling for the excess engine, so uh, the efficiency may be. Uh, higher in this kind of engine. Also, the air and fuel prepared well inside the intake manifold, makes it during all the uh, suction stroke and combustion stroke makes it together. The combustion happening in the whole cylinder with huge number of spots without uh, a remarkable flame. It's difficult to recognize the flame, front of the flame. This kind of engine may be in some case, we have uh, unburned hydrocarbon and they have CO because uh, the amount of fuel is very low. Extra lean, sometimes we use extra lean uh, fuel, extra lean mixture. Uh, the uh, temperature is very low inside the engine, so we have a little uh, unburned hydrocarbon and CO emission. In this kind of engine, the efficiency is very high, but the NOx, because the temperature is lower, it's lower, and the combustion happening is no time, so there is no time to form NOx, actually, so we don't have a NOx at all, and we, have a, we don't have a suit, but we have a, a, one problem will uh, make uh, a trouble for HCCI engine with combustion of timing control. The phasing in this kind of engine, it's very difficult to adjust it. And low power density, uh, the engine uh, engine power, it's very limited. But if we want to increase the engine power, the combustion will happen uh, during uh, the moving of the piston from the top dead center, uh, bottom to, to uh, bottom dead center to top dead center during combustion stroke. Maybe the combustion happening in this stroke, so will destroy the engine actually and make a lot of trouble. When we compare it with the combustion ignition engine and spark ignition engine, so uh, the, uh, the HCC engine uh, have a higher efficiency and low NOx, so this is uh, considered as a new technique. In this case, we want to 
compare with uh, between uh, different three techniques for uh, equivalence ratio and uh, temperature equivalence ratio means amount of fuel inside uh, the engine if the amount of fuel becoming higher and the temperature in uh, limits uh, less than two, uh, 2000 Kelvin this means uh, suit formation we have a higher uh, suit formation in this uh, area this area means we use a conventional combustion ignition engine or a combustion, uh, combustion ignition engine and if we use a lower equivalence ratio and a higher temperature inside the engine so we we'll talk about uh, NOx concentration more than 5000 ppm it's very uh, difficult for uh, our regulation from euro or another regulation if we use a lower equivalence ratio and use a lower uh, combustion uh, temperature so we will we'll talk about uh, uh, homogeneous charge combustion ignition engine or low temperature combustion engine so we have uh, diesel combustion in this area and uh, in this area we'll talk about uh, a limited value of lambda or equivalence ratio and limited value of uh, temperature inside the engine and uh, the lower temperature technique uh, work in this area so uh, we far about the suit there is no suit in low temperature and uh, the NOx is uh, also low. Here we compare between uh, Euro standard, uh, as we can see here in this area, uh, for the particulate, this uh, uh, defined the Euro 3 in 2000. And uh, when we compare it with uh, Euro 5 or Euro 6, in this point so we only have this limitation this is a small limitation in this point only this point this uh, uh, about uh, the regulation of the NOx and uh, uh, particulate uh, if we want to uh, work in this area with a lower concentration of NOx and lower concentration of particulate we only have a one uh, solution we have one technology this homogeneous charge compression ignition engine to fit this uh, small domain of NOx and particulate to understand what happening inside the engine for the HCI engine we'll talk about the combustion process we want to control the combustion inside the engine uh, the combustion is divided into three parts inside the engine uh, the first part uh, as we know the fuel and the air enter the, uh, the cylinder suction stroke and compression stroke so some reactivity of the fuel happening uh, this reactivity happening during the uh, suction stroke and compression stroke so this uh, low temperature heat release a little uh, heat release happening in low temperature reaction after this point with a certain degree of crank angle there is a negative temperature uh, uh, techniques uh, there is no reaction happening with the fuel and the air and suddenly suddenly with for uh, about uh, one degree or two degree crank angle the combustion happening and uh, high temperature combustion technique happening in this area and all the fuel uh, will combusted uh, in uh, no time uh, almost in this figure, we, we compare two kinds of fuel, primary reference fuel and isoctane fuel. Uh, each fuel have uh, a different characteristics, different um, uh, heat release curve. For example, our primary reference fuel have a two uh, uh, or three combustion phasing, low temperature and higher temperature heat release. We have a three uh, negative temperature, there is no reaction between. But for the red uh, curve for iso -octane, we only have a one reaction technique. It's very difficult kind of fuel. So if we make a combination with two fuel, Bremer reference fuel and iso -octane fuel, we can control the combustion phasing between low temperature and the higher temperature. If we use a higher 
uh, uh, isoctane or fuel like isoctane fuel have only one stage combustion. It's very difficult to control the staging. Staging means how the fuel is injected inside the cylinder, in which time the fuel is injected. If we don't have a low temperature and all the fuel is injected, uh, is uh, burned uh, during the compression stroke with a, a very uh, extensive pressure, maybe the, the image will be damaged in this case. Actually, we have uh, the advantage of the HCC engine over any kind of engine. We have a, a four main advantage, higher thermal efficiency. The NOx and particulate is uh, lower comparing with another kind of fuel. Higher fuel economy, the fuel uh, flexibility, we can use any kind of fuel without any problem. The HCC engine have a, actually have some challenging. The first challenging is controlling combustion phasing. Combustion phasing is controlled for spark ignition engine by the spark plug. Spark plug timing is controlling the phasing. For compression ignition, the timing for the injection, uh, start of injection is controlling the phasing. But for uh, homogeneous charge compression engine, we don't have a spark plug. We don't have an injection like a, a conventional compression ignition engine. So it's very difficult for the phasing. Until now, we have this problem, and we must solve this problem. Uh, limited operating range. This is also the second uh, problem. But in, in these days, and as a uh, new trend, we use a hybrid technique. The engine may be working with a hybrid technique, conventional uh, compression ignition engine, and use in, in some loop, in some uh, operating condition, we use uh, HCC. Uh, also, we have a higher, in some condition, we have a higher concentration for uh, HC and CO. Uh, we have a cold start problem, actually. So, uh, as I said, the conventional techniques will be solve this problem. Uh, we have also problem in premixing charge uh, preparation. How to prepare uh, the fuel in the intake manifold? How to prepare the fuel in uh, 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 stroke or suction stroke, for example? How to inject the fuel for the diesel inside the suction stroke? The fuel is um, must uh, spray it with a higher pressure and higher temperature must evaporate it. So it's very difficult to evaporate the diesel fuel and the any kind of fuel inside uh, the intake manifold and uh, suction stroke. This actually this uh, main problem uh, with the controlling with the phasing. Also we have a problem in remixing, uh, remix charge preparation. If we inject the fuel inside the intake uh, manifold or inside the suction stroke, the fuel with, uh, is evaporated, will uh, this uh, make no air inside the cylinder. The CC of the engine may be reduced. So the amount of air inside the engine reduced. So the volumetric efficiency of the engine is reduced. And then uh, the whole engine efficiency is reduced. The solution for all of this uh, problem is known, and uh, anyone can uh, review it now without any problem. Now we're talking about the parameter influence uh, the combustion techniques for the HCC. We have a lot of parameters we can uh, use it to control the phasing and control the combustion inside the engine. First, the equivalence ratio. If we talk about the equivalence ratio, remember the premixed charge preparation. How to adjust the equivalence ratio inside, inside the engine? So we must uh, use uh, a specified fuel system techniques uh, uh, to solve this problem. But actually, in this point, uh, we use a different value of uh, lambda or equivalence ratio. 
And uh, if this, if equivalence ratio is reduced, the combustion may be not having or not occur. Okay, so we have a, a, a higher value and lower value of uh, equivalence ratio we must uh, work in it uh, accurate, accurate. If the uh, lambda is reduced, the combustion may be having uh, earlier or during the compression stroke, so the engine will be damaged if uh, the combustion happening in uh, this uh, region. Also, if the lambda is reduced, maybe we have a misfire, so we have a, a burnout hydrocarbon and have uh, a problem in the engine. Actually, if we use uh, fuel roberts, how to control the fuel roberts? In this figure, for example, this uh, uh, one of uh, my uh, research and publish it in uh, fuel journal, uh, this figure, we have three kinds of fuel used it in HSI engine. We have a compressed natural gas, and uh, we have, a, uh, have used hydrogen fuel, and have a fuel like uh, diesel, uh, biodiesel fuel, uh, dimethyl acer or DME. We have a different dose or different percentage from the three kind of fuel. We have a three kind of fuel. Uh, different percentage from the CNG and different percentage from the hydrogen and different percentage from DME. The combination of the mixture, the blend of uh, all of these three kind of fuel uh, gave us a region in uh, this area, only in this area, the combustion will be having normally inside the HCSI. If uh, we increase the dimethyl acer, then a certain value, and uh, uh, increase or reduce the CNG at a certain value, uh, the misfire will be okay. If we increase the D, uh, the dimethyl acer, a certain value and uh, hydrogen in a certain value, the knocking region will happen. Uh, this may be destroy the engine and make uh, trouble for the engine. Even we use a multiple fuel, we must uh, define the percentage of each fuel precisely uh, inside uh, before injected inside the engine. We'll talk another parameters like uh, intake temperature. And take temperature. If the te temperature uh, in the beginning of the suction stroke is increased, this may be the reaction will be uh, uh, enhanced, and the low temperature, as I said before, the low temperature will be enhanced also, and the combustion happening earlier during the comp compression stroke. So maybe in this point, the uh, uh, combustion process uh, uh, ma making look like combustion and maybe the engine will be damaged in these conditions. Also, if we, in, uh, we talk about uh, intake pressure as a parameter, maybe influence the HCI engine or the compression, uh, the cylinder pressure, to control this parameter, we use a different compression ratio. Compression ratio lower and uh, uh, 14, 17. And uh, if the compression ratio increased, maybe the combustion also will be enhanced and uh, uh, the pressure curve enhanced, but also uh, still limited compression ratio because uh, the, com the combustion will happen in before the top bit center and the combustion as we can see, heat addition, the cylinder temperature increased rapidly inside the engine in almost two or three crank angle uh, inside the engine. Also, the pressure may be increased sharply, rapidly inside the engine, maybe uh, make a lot of trouble for uh, the engine body. We talk about the problem of mixture formation. We actually we have a two kind of uh, mixture formation. Uh, the first one, if we talk about external mixture formation, this means all the fuel or the part of the fuel is injected from uh, the intake manifold. So both fuel injection, uh, something like a carburetor. Uh, this kind of 
uh, operation we must use a low uh, volatile volatile fuels like uh, gasoline or another fuel may be injected in during the manifold so uh, must evaporate it but if we talk about this kind of fuel we must uh, talk about uh, the volumetric efficiency of uh, the heat so because the fuel is evaporized uh, the fuel will take all the volume inside the engine no extra uh, air uh, can enter in, so uh, the, the engine operation also will also make something like uh, fumigation of the mixture use uh, any kind of fuel but use a new fuel system in order to uh, evaporate uh, the fuel uh, before inject in intake manifold Another mixture formation techniques use in cylinder mixture preparation. Uh, in these techniques, we inject the fuel inside uh, the engine directly, but we have two techniques on. The first technique is early direct injection. This means we inject the fuel maybe inside uh, during the uh, suction stroke or the early, uh, uh, the first stage of compression stroke. Another techniques, late direct injection techniques, maybe in the late direct injection technique, we inject the fuel uh, uh, maybe in the end of uh, compression stroke or during the compression stroke. Also in a third uh, method for the uh, mixture formation, we can uh, use two combination of the fuel. Some fuel uh, injected externally and some fuel injected internally or internal in, uh, inside the engine. So this is the dual uh, uh, mixing technique. Actually, in HTC engine uh, work, we must uh, uh, work by uh, simulation uh, techniques or use uh, software and the codes to simulate the engine before working experimental. Experimental work is very uh, expensive. The engine may be damaged, have a lot of, uh, need a lot of procedure, may be very, a little expensive to do this kind of experimental, especially in HSI engine. So we must take a little uh, focus in how to simulate uh, HSI engine. Um, we, we, we must know uh, something uh, about the Macher number. The Macher number is this uh, uh, ratio for the turbulent time scale to chemical time scale. The Macher number, if we have a large the Macher number, this means the turbulent mixing is a rate limiting process. So in this case, we must put the turbulent and the computational fluid dynamics technique in our consideration. But if a small the Macher number, this means the chemistry is a rate limiting process. So in this case, we must put in our consideration the chemistry of the fuel. Uh, how the fuel is burning. Uh, in HSI engine, as we said before, the combustion process happening almost in no time, in one or two degree of crank angle. So we have a very small Macher number. So we must focus in only in chemistry. To solve this problem or work in this uh, problem, so we have uh, uh, two uh, methods for uh, the simulation. The first one is single zone simulation. Single zone simulation, we only focus on uh, chemical kinetics. Consider all the cylinder as a one point, as a one point or a one cell. So no need to study the velocity, no need to study uh, uh, the pressure inside uh, the engine. We will only focus in uh, chemical kind. This uh, kind of simulation, uh, single zone uh, simulation. If we talk about multi zone simulation, we have a two uh, techniques. We see dimensional model. We use it to reduce the time of calculation and have a governing equation, a little governing equation. Maybe we uh, the cylinder will divide it into a little part, a little zone, and uh, uh, we study uh, the heat transfer between uh, each zone by this model. Uh, and uh, we have a multi-model or uh, computational fluid dynamics, but 
if we talk about computational field dynamics, we must talk about uh, the chemistry. So we must make something like uh, coupling between the CFD, uh, the computational fluid dynamic uh, solver, and the chemical solver. If we use a chemical solver, solver, so we must talk about uh, the chemical kinetics or the uh, the mechanism of the combustion meca combustion mechanism for the fuel. Any fuel will have a combustion mechanism. So we have a single zone model and multi zone model. Have a quasi-dimensional and multi-dimensional model. We we'll talk about the chemistry. If we want to add the chemistry solver for uh, our calculation. For uh, the single zone model, we uh, use detailed chemistry without any problem. Also, we can use reduced chemistry. So the ignition or the, uh, the result of the ignition may be very good, have a, a good uh, value. Burning rate, if we, if we need, need to study the burning rate, burning rate, burning rate, we we'll talk about the pressure. We we'll talk about the temperature distribution inside the engine. So single zone model, only one one zone. So it's very difficult to uh, have a result in this condition. So the result's not good. We must use, uh, maybe we have it in reduced chemistry in uh, multi-zone and multi-dimensional model would have a, a result. About the emission uh, result from the simulation, the single zone model also not uh, suitable to simulate or give us any indication about uh, the emissions. Uh, if we use a quasi dimensional, maybe the result may be trusted or not trusted, but not uh, suggested for our uh, work. So if we use a multi zoom model and multi-dimensional with reduced chemistry, maybe we have this. Uh, I want to ask a question about why we put no result here in this point. Uh, this means we use a multi-dimensional, a multi-zoom model with multi-dimensional, with a detailed chemistry, uh, use this uh, uh, direction. It's very difficult to uh, use a multi-zoom model with multi-dimensional, with detailed chemistry at the same time. It's very difficult to use it. We need a huge computer uh, ability to have this result. So we must use reduced chemistry because uh, the calculation cost may be very, very high if you use this uh, direction. For uh, the computational efficiency, the computational efficiency uh, single zone model, it's very good uh, because a single zone, the calculation may be take about a half hour as a maximum one hour and uh, you have a result, so no problem about this. If you qu uh, use a quiz dimensional for multi-dimensional mode, maybe a result is good, is not good. Uh, this depends on uh, the user. But uh, in the case of multidimensional, with the detailed chemistry, it's very difficult to, for the computational efficiency. And maybe if you use a BC computer, maybe take about uh, uh, one year, one and a half year to have a one run in this case. You must use a sober computer or cluster computer to work in uh, this condition. So. Uh, the problem in computational efficiency if, uh, for reduced chemistry is still difficult uh, to do it. But as a suggestion for the new trend in these days, if you, if you want to work with a simulation or the modeling for ECC engine, must follow multi-zone model, multi-dimensional, and use uh, reduced chemistry in this case. Actually, we use a three competition, uh, uh, computational fluid dynamic and 3D computational fluid dynamics and make a simulation for the compressed natural gas and hydrogen exercise engine. This simulation will be uh, done by Kiva 3DR2. This is adjusted in Huagun University of Science and Technology in China. Uh, the task of our team is uh, there to uh, first generate uh, the mesh and uh, generate uh, the, the new region for uh, the gas injector inside the manifold. We inject the fuel in this point in uh, the manifold. So we make uh, some modification in Kiva to uh, adjust this point. 
and also added uh, uh, reduced the chemical kinetic mechanism for uh, this condition and run the program he, here uh, the injector just opening in this point and uh, after crank angle the fuel is uh, injected inside the complete natural gas injected and uh, the valve is open and uh, the complete natural gas starting uh, enter the cylinder as you can see the moving behind uh, the valve, valve seat and enter the cylinder as you can see here the uh, in this point as you can see here in this point the injection process is closed uh, there is still some fuel inside the manifold, uh, but uh, the air flowing take it inside the engine. Uh, the motion, tumble motion, swirl motion inside the engine is um, uh, mix the fuel with the air. Uh, this is the end of uh, com combustion stroke. The temperature is increased, MEB and combustion is happening before the top bit center as a simulation process. As you can see here, we take snapshot from the combustion, eight degree before bottom bit center, top bit center, before top bit center, eight degree. The temperature reaches about uh, 1,000 degree. Uh, before seven degree, the temperature is in increased suddenly to one, about one, uh, 1,400 uh, degree in in only in one degree eight degree before top the center and seven degree before uh, top the center and uh, another one degree the combustion is happening in uh, more point in a, a huge number of spots like explosion in everywhere inside all the engine uh, and about uh, one degree more uh, the combustion is finished and all the heat release added in from 8 degree before top bit center and 5 degree before uh, top bit center. Uh, uh, this this what happened inside the HCC engine exactly. All the combustion happening inside uh, the cylinder in a huge point, in huge spots. Uh, all the combustion happening in one time all the fuel mixture consumed in no time, almost no time. But actually here, uh, for the conventional spark ignition engine, or uh, this result actually for a bad uh, fuel mixture. If the fuel is not uh, mixed well, if the fuel is not prepared inside the engine well, this will uh, make a two a spots of the fuel, one spot here and another spot in the engine here. This is a simulation result. Uh, we have an explosion in this point and another explosion in this point. This vector may be represent the uh, velocity distribution inside the engine. We have explosion here, explosion here. Imagine if we do this experimental, experimentally, if you do this. Uh, experimentally the engine will be destroyed in no time but uh, we have this uh, result simulation by Kiva uh, could show uh, this is a spot and another spot this unregular combustion or knocking combustion uh, uh, process inside the engine we have also how to study uh, the combustion and stability inside the engine to do this uh, we, we study the pressure variation inside the engine or study cycle to cycle variation inside the engine for uh, 300 uh, cycles, continuous cycles. We find uh, the pressure maybe have a higher pressure and another maybe you have a misfire uh, cycles. Uh, for HCC engine, uh, we have a cycle to cycle variation maybe make a, a a problem for uh, the engine because it's very difficult to control the phasing inside uh, the engine. Actually, this uh, uh, my uh, uh, teammate in China when I was in China and uh, during preparing uh, our uh, testing to uh, study the HCSI engine, 
uh, during the operation. Our task to make a, a vaporizer chamber. This vaporizer chamber uh, in, uh, to ma uh, make us easy to inject the diesel in uh, for, uh, new uh, spray like this. Uh, this injects the diesel into intake manifold. So we design a system in the intake manifold. This the engine and this intake manifold of the engine. And uh, during this uh, process, um, uh, the fuel is injected as a vapor in uh, the intake manifold. Uh, it's uh, very difficult to do it, but we have uh, something. Uh, uh, this is the engine. The engine was fixed with the dyno and the other measuring techniques. So uh, the fresh air coming from here, we have uh, uh, some device to measure the fresh air. We have uh, two direction of the of the air. One air, fresh air, cold air, uh, go directly to uh, something uh, mixing chamber. This mixing chamber can inject the uh, mixture of the air and fuel directly into the engine. Another uh, uh, branches of the air uh, to heat the air. You must heat uh, some air. We take uh, the heating air with a different temperature and uh, inject this air into uh, uh, a vaporizer chamber. In this vaporizer chamber, we inject uh, the diesel fuel or any kind of fuel here. So the fuel will be uh, vaporized. And uh, the unvaporized fuel, maybe we take in a return uh, direction to the tank another way and uh, the vapor will taken uh, out and injected into uh, the mixing uh, chamber the, in the mixing chamber we take the vapor plus fresh air injected uh, well and uh, uh, injected into the engine take manifold also in this technique we added the uh, EGR line and make two techniques for hot EGR and cold EGR. So we make uh, cooler for uh, uh, deleting the pulsating of the EGR and also reduce the temperature of uh, the EGR with a different percentage. They added uh, different valves, these valves and these valves to control the EGR amount and injected here and uh, mix it with the uh, uh, vaporized fuel in this mixing chamber plus uh, EGR plus fresh air, uh, all of this injected into the engine and uh, uh, run the engine smooth without any problem. Uh, uh, here in, uh, as you can see, this is a video of the engine after running. This video, uh, if anyone have some experience about uh, the sound of the engine may be different than a conventional engine. Uh, may be a little uh, sharp uh, noise, and the engine may be work uh, speedily at uh, uh, different uh, uh, operating uh, loops. We have a scientific challenge for HS engine, as I said before. Uh, if we're looking for a model, it's very difficult for us. Experimental sensor, it's very uh, expensive. The fuel characteristics may affect the combustion process. The uh, fuel preparation, it's very difficult. Control the combustion phasing for the engine. Control high load conditions, it's very difficult for HSI engine. The noise and look like a look like combustion, it's very difficult. Emission control maybe need also to put in our consideration and call the start problem. This is uh, the main problem of uh, the HSO. A future research direction in this kind of engine, we have must uh, find uh, a way to extend uh, the high load limits, high load operation, uh, using alternative fuel mixture. We must talk about uh, this problem and uh, there's a future research direction. Uh, improvement in fuel system control, fuel system control, use a new design for the fuel system and use uh, automatic control. Enhancing auto ignition for uh, at low load condition or using hybrid combustion system, HSI engine, 
plus spark ignition engine. This is a hybrid uh, moon. This is a future train. Using EGR with different percentage, hot EGR or cold EGR. Uh, using optical techniques to understand uh, what happening inside the cylinder. This also is a new train, but a little expensive if you talk about the, the optical engine will be very uh, expensive. Uh, investigate and take air conditioning. Talk about the, uh, the conditions of the injected air inside the engine for the manifold or uh, the in, uh, direct uh, injection inside the engine. Uh, fuel injection timing. We talk about the fuel injection timing. Uh, Fuel injection timing and fuel injection uh, number. Fuel injection number. How many times you inject the fuel inside the engine? Maybe inject the fuel uh, several times. This is uh, named split injection. Split injection, inject fuel. Maybe also use uh, uh, two methods for uh, internal and external mixture formation. Also, degree of charge homogeneity homogeneity of the fuel, this is the main important point, and fuel finally uh, controls the fuel uh, chemistry. Thank you to uh, let me uh, this uh, opportunity to talk with uh, uh, yours, and I hope if anyone have a question, I will uh, answer it. Uh, thank you, Madad, sir. There are lots of questions from the students, but uh, we are having uh, limited time. So one question I will ask you in the session, and other question I will mail you, and we will discuss. I will discuss with the students after later on. The one question I received okay. from the student is, how does supercharging affect the performance of SCCI engine? Supercharger? Yeah, supercharging. Supercharger effect. Yeah, I uh, I discussed this point in. Uh, Increasing the pressure inside the intake manifold. I will uh, show it again here. If the pressure in the engine increased, this uh, means the combustion happening early. As I said here in this uh, uh, slide, added a turbo, a turbo charger like added. Uh, uh, Increase the compression ratio of the engine. For example, uh, if you, uh, as you see here, if if the compression ratio may be 14, maybe the combustion is not happening. If increase is a little, the combustion will be happening. We can use a, a turbocharger or sober, or sober charger to control the combustion phasing. But this may be need more advanced uh, sensors techniques. Because if you increase uh, the intake pressure uh, without any control, this uh, will make the combustion uh, happening in, uh, rapidly and uh, happening uh, before uh, uh, the end of combustion stroke, the compression stroke, so the engine will be uh, damaged. Uh, so using uh, supercharger or increasing the intake pressure may be need uh, uh, some uh, sen sensors use it to control the engine or watch the engine behavior. If the pressure increased uh, without any control, well, this may be uh, destroy, the in uh, destroy the engine completely. As you can see here, the combustion happening, if the combustion ratio increased, the combustion happening before uh, uh, top dead center in the end of compression stroke. Actually, this this is a simulation work. So, in the simulation work, it's very difficult to uh, see the knock life combustion. But if this happen in a real case, in a real condition, so the engine will be destroyed completely. Okay. Is, is that enough? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Shall I conclude the session with word of thanks? Yes, definitely, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Medak, sir, we are very much thankful to have you. The session was wonderful. And thank you again for sharing challenges and recent plans on SCCI engines.
we hope that this will continue for the further research collaboration also our relation will be there for research collaboration also thank you so much doc, uh, dr medhat sir we are very much thank thankful. you and thanks for all of the professors and i'm looking forward to, uh, looking forward to, to uh, uh, talk with you again and uh, maybe next time you can come to egypt and visit me in my university and join yeah. my work and uh, uh, this my pleasure to uh, to with you today definitely sure sir, sure, sir. And thank you thanks a lot sir thanks thanks sir thanks sir Yeah, Medhat sir. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Jitan boy. Thank you, Master sir. Ah, my sir. Ah, Jitan boy. Ah. Ah, I'm streaming. Ne banne stop kar di tu sir. Just session for you.